Hi, Leo. Welcome to your January 2018 Astro Update. It's Raina here. So, Libra. Well, there's going to be a lot of emphasis on the fourth house of home and family in the sign of Capricorn in January. And this is typically the case anyway, but there are two more players in this. And one of them has been there for 10 years, actually, in the form of Pluto transiting the fourth house. Now, in 2008, Pluto entered Capricorn. So I want you to reflect on the last 10 years in terms of your home life. And this can even be regarding your family of origin, your mother specifically. Some people say fourth house with the father. I just don't get it because the 10th house is supposed to be the father. And the fourth house is connected to cancer. So that's the mother. But anyway, have you noticed that a lot of stuff has come out in the last 10 years that maybe you didn't even know, and it's been kind of intense, uh, discovering your roots. Maybe there were secrets that were revealed in the last decade that have to do with something connected to your family. And that has been very transformative for you. And maybe um, you've purged a lot of illusions. Well, Pluto is going to be in this sector for another five years. So don't um, breathe a sigh of re relief just yet. I think Pluto is actually a really important and healthy thing, even though it has the rep of being uh, like very, uh, you know, like bearing down on us. But it's like lancing a boil, right? You know, it may be quite messy with all that pus like shooting out. Oh, I'm sorry. I know that you Librans uh, kind of recoil at that kind of thing. But um, anyway, the ultimate goal is to get rid of the toxic underbelly of whatever is happening. And who knows, maybe uh, certain revelations about family will help you to improve your life right now when you, when you kind of delve into the past. But here's the other thing. Saturn is now in Capricorn. So there's going to be something where you may find yourself in the next few years having to assume more responsibility in regards to your parents. Maybe they are elderly and you need to take care of them. Maybe you need to move to where they are. And, you know, demands may be made of you. Also, if you are trying to sell a house, you may find yourself um, having a difficult time doing so. Uh, because Saturn tends to restrict things. And you may have to simply make do with your house as it is, even if you're unhappy. But the ultimate upshot of this is that when, I believe it's going to be 2020 when Saturn leaves this sector. If, let's say, you um, felt like you couldn't move ahead with your house, uh, house hunting endeavors for whatever reason, you may actually have a situation where you get a much better house later on. So Saturn may delay gratification, but it won't prevent it. So having said that, um, on the first day of the month, and for you Europeans and other um, <laughs> people in the world, uh, that will be on the second day of January. There will be a super moon in Cancer, like a full moon at 11 degrees 
of Cancer. And this is going to be in your 10th house of career, Leo. So the 10th house is sitting right up at the top of the chart. It's your place in the world. It's your time to shine. And um, in some cases with a full moon, there can be an ending. If you're of a certain age, you may just uh, say, I'm out of here. I'm 65 years old or I'm 62 years old and I'm done with this place and take off your work clothes and, you know, turn in your resignation and start retirement. For some people, you may um, have recognition. Sometimes full moon, a full moon can bring the attention on you and, and accolades on you. So that can actually be a time where your career, that there's career advancement because it's like um, a culmination of your efforts. On the second day of the month, there's going to be um, Uranus going direct at 24 degrees of Aries, and this is your seventh house of committed partnership, which you happen to rule in the universal chart. Now, here's the deal. When this happens on the second, this means that all the planets are direct. And so now you have the green light for things to, if you launch anything, there's a better chance of everything running smoothly. We have the months of January and February um, to be free uh, to do this. March is when things start to get a little hairy because first Jupiter retrogrades and then Mercury at the end of the month. So if you've been kind of waiting to launch, you might want to consider this month. And um, talking about the effect of Uranus direct in the seventh house, you may have been experiencing, if you're married or otherwise committed Libra, that there have been a lot of strange um, and unpredictable things going on with your marriage, specifically with that other person. And this may also relate to their career, for instance. For instance, they may, um, if they're working where they are getting assigned different uh, contracts, in other words, contract work, and maybe they have to travel a lot, or perhaps they're in the military, and they're seeing more assignments, and it's very unpredictable. They may not even be with you a lot of the time. They may be gone here, there, and everywhere. So um, I think it will settle down a little bit, but during 2018... Um, not sure, I can't give you the exact dates of that, but Uranus is going to go into the next sign, which is Taurus, and that'll be your eighth house. And then it's going to dip back into Aries again until finally staying in Taurus in 2019. So you're not going to have to deal with this uncertainty much longer, thankfully. Your partner may have even been unpredictable in their behavior, and that has caused you to be quite um, distressed or confused. And that will clear itself out within a year from now. Mercury goes into Capricorn on the 11th in that fourth house of home and family, so communication with parents and, you know, there could be even some sort of um, contracts that you have to sign. So before this date, before the 11th, Mercury is going to be in Sagittarius, and this is going to be in your third house. And um, this may be more of an intellectual transit in the third house, dealing with Internet issues, if that's how your career aspirations go, or or your interest, maybe you're researching these kinds of things, or that um, you may be looking into getting training for yourself in some area. 
But then on the 31st, Mercury goes into your fifth house of romance and creativity. So um, you're also having Venus going into this sector on the 17th. So Mercury goes there on the 31st, Venus goes there earlier. Um, there may be someone that you have your eye on and you are crushing on, but maybe you don't really start to seriously talk to this person until around the 31st and going into February. And um, on the 16th of January, there is a new moon in your fourth house of home and family. So whether you're coming to some kind of new understanding with um, family members, uh, I'm talking about specifically parents, or maybe if you've signed some kind of contract, you're going to be moving into a new house. Um, perhaps, it, you know, when I said that thing about Saturn, it is possible that it affects you in a totally different way, where maybe you're getting your first house and that is, and Saturn is kind of establishing you in, you know, for your family and you're going to have children uh, filling up that house. And because um, Saturn can be an anchoring influence. Before Venus goes into your fifth house on the 17th, it is going to be in that fourth house of home and family for half of the month. And that means that Venus can bring money with her. And in the fourth house, it could be something connected to a property. So uh, you may get the funds to be able to buy a house that you've really been dreaming on buying. So that could be very good for real estate in January for some of you. Mars goes into your third house in Sagittarius on the 26th of the month. That means that most of the month in Scorpio, we're looking at Mars for, for Libra being in your second house of earned income. And this makes you very driven to earn money. Again, could be associated with purchasing a property, perhaps. And you need to get that down payment and you're still kind of like short a little bit. And so you work to achieve that. Um, you're really hustling. You're trying to make money and you have a lot of energy at your disposal to be able to do that. When Mars is in your third house, watch out for fights with siblings or even neighbors. If you have moved, you might be like, um, <laughs> I was thinking of um, Gladys Kravitz on uh, Bewitched, where you're sticking your nose, you're getting very aggressive in your neighborhood, and like you, you've moved into a new neighborhood, and you're just... Um, trying to run the show, you, I hope, you know, <laughs> it's, it's funny as I, as I get older, you know, I'm making these references that I'm, I'm curious if I'm, if I'm ever going to be in this place where nobody knows what I'm talking about because everyone's younger than I am. But um, the other thing that Mars in the third house can do is make you very like, let's say you did move, you might just be uh, roaming around the neighborhood trying to, to get familiarized with everything that's available. Um, the third house can be your local environment, as well as your siblings. And uh, what else is the third house? And of course, communication. And you may be very involved in something. Maybe you have an internet project, you're trying to build a website. And you're just throwing everything at it because you want to get it done. And you're very busy, or something along those lines. So very interesting for you guys. And um, I hope that you enjoyed this Libra. Oh, you know what? I forgot about something. Uh, you're actually on the 31st going to have a blue moon lunar eclipse in Leo. 
at 11 degrees of Leo in your 11th house. So that 1111 number is kind of coming up. And the 11th house is the house of hopes and wishes, the luckiest house in the Zodiac. You did have a solar eclipse here back in August. So now we're talking about a lunar eclipse. Maybe there was something you started back in August that you wanted to achieve a certain goal, a long range goal that just is your heart of hearts. And um, maybe this is the time that becomes realized, Libra, at the time of uh, this blue moon lunar eclipse. It's a very lucky house and a very, it could be a very um, fulfilling end to the month for you. And I hope that all your dreams come true. If you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. I have different types, including natal chart interpretations, which is kind of like what this kind of reading would be sort of like. But um, my website is rainandmoonastrology.com, and the link is below to that. Have a great January. Take care. Bye.